Hello and welcome, part two of this video, which unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, is going to be very short. I just finished recording it, but for some whatever reason, it didn't, it gave me an error for sound, which I usually only get when I don't have my microphone plugged in. And I always get that, in fact, when my microphone's not plugged in. I do about, lately, three, four, or five I have videos I've recorded without the microphone plugged in. But nothing, none for as long as, maybe one really long before it. Because this was, it was a 25 minute video that I did in part two. The, the game on here is buying low, selling high. This example used VEN or VChain against Binance. And it worked out that the vast majority of the trades occurred in here. There hasn't been many trades amongst here because of all of this beautiful up and down choppy action that occurred amongst the first half. In fact, the second half amount of trades, relatively boring. As far as how the results would work out towards this is how it played, ending with owning 245 coins, which is almost 150% more than the starting amount, and 50 base currency. And at one point it was up to 95, starting off with the 60 that you had. So 10 more. Worked out very, very well. The play was working towards when you go longer in the game, you have the option to play for bigger stakes. Because you start off by selling 12, 14, 13, 16, 20. Then it was 25, 22, 40, 26, 25, 30, 25, oh, 50, 60, 25, 30. So that's one of the aspects within this game that's very common that you can notice that you're playing at those larger numbers because the trades just simply work within the mechanism. If you were to sell what we own right now, which would be 245 at 1772, the sale would make 43 base currency, which means 93.46 would be the value of such. Starting off at 60, but never really ever putting more than 30 in really. I mean, what's the lowest this number ever gets down to? 39 on a couple of occasions. So you could even have said, yeah, I'm only going to start off with, say, 30 this way. And you'd be looking at, oh, 30 to 60. I doubled up. Yeah, you've done very, very well. But when you look at the statistics... This is after the first buy. If you include the first buy, the average buy cost would be 22. So therefore, we have the spot where you buy at the 230 average and sell at a 440 average. Just magnificent to be able to uh, get that kind of uh, gain amongst the trades. That meant the average buy would have worked out to be just above right where the circle is. I was explaining this at the end of the video last time, so nothing too big there. But 44, the average sale up here. That's pretty darn near efficient. And this, to me, is a very, very basic but relatively advanced strategy there's not really much to it once you get into doing such especially if you only plan a small amount of coins this way and especially if you're on a more volatile scale of at least 20 30 percent moves from last price or last trade really then it's not going to be much work but when you think about that oh it's not going to be much work yeah, that allows people to do other things, have work with other jobs and so on and so forth. 
But when you do have a lot of coats, 10, well, well over 10, 20, 30, 40, however many more, you're going to run into situations where you're going to have busy days and not so busy weeks. Now, the one thing that got boring about the end of the last video that I did was there was not many trades in here. There was some, but there wasn't that many because the volatility of the market wasn't as wild as it was before. It's still good. It's still good. A lot of other codes are much, much worse. I'm going to show you an example on Bittrex of my strategy and how I missed a recent trade by just a little bit. This is the code pay against BTC. I sold this earlier and I'm now sold it for higher than where it was. I think I sold around 85, but I'll show you. This level here, you, uh, you can't, let me just see it so you can see the bottom. The, le the levels are on the bottom, open of 91.10, high of 98.48. I'll show you my four orders that I have right now. And I got 99.78. So that's 130 basis points that I missed my sale on. As a trader, I'm going to have to reduce that number to like 98.20, 97.95. Small pierce below where it came from. It sucks that I was unable to take advantage of that uh, sale. But that's just how the game is played. My next sell order after that, and I'm selling much more, or decently more, 28, I'm selling at that price. I want to sell 48 if it goes to 13.9. But if I get a sell order, I would probably change it to about 12.4, maybe, and then sell about 30 something instead, 32. I'll figure it out mathematically later on. And then a massive one just to sell remaining balance, an all-in sale, basically. 144 if I can get to 77,000. That would be better than one tenth of a Bitcoin or 0.11. And then my buy order is at 7,008. This is my last few trades. Buy at 11,000, buy 10,000, buy 91, buy 85, buy 76. And then I sold earlier today at 80, around 86.50. I'm no longer playing these decimal games anymore and playing bigger volatile stakes than I was before. Just a little bit. I decided just to increase it a little bit, which is me instead of trading 11 and 12, I got the 28 in there. I sold everything for my last buy. Now we're in a bear market. So 7,600 was where uh, the last buy was. The sell difference was over a thousand basis points. So that's about uh, 13, 14% on that trade. But I want to buy, when, if I'm in a bull market, I want to buy higher than my last buy. Neutral market around the same and bear market lower. So with 7,600 being my last buy, I'm going to go 7,008, buying 49 of them. And this one, this site here, I use it so that all codes are always worth about the same. So I'm using a mathematical calculator to make sure that it's net value because of the sale would be a good price. Now, normally, like I was saying in the videos, you want to sell lower than how much you made and, and base currency, but more. Well, the 48.9 would cost me more than the 28. But because the price action would be a significant lower low, that's the reason why I'm doing so. And mathematically, for me to be worth the value I need to be here at, that's just what the number comes in at. So then, where does 7,008 uh, play amongst the chart? Well, I know you can't see the numbers too well, but I probably, let me just go to daily chart. It would be a significant leg below here. So there's a spot where if this is a failed rally, I would expect it to break below this low and then about 10% below here is fine enough for me to get a buy, thus buying at a lower low. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.